Hello, this is Mark Boyer and this is a uh, uh, part four revised on my freedom for dummies. Um, I don't think I came across clear enough last time. Uh, basically, uh, anyone who is healthy, who is over 18, can become a member of the Marijuana Party and just by simply for filling out a Health Canada form. Okay. If you're a resident of Canada, in other words, can't vote, you fill out the same form and where it says you just fill out the mailing address side and on the non-mailing, you know, like your address side, you put out uh, non-resident. Okay. That's all you have to do. Now, that's free. Okay. There's a Quadra EDA that we're setting up that's actually uh, a peer trust. Okay, the, the, the peer trust is at arm's length from the park. And a peer trust is actually an offshore international bank. And uh, it's also a pure trust, which is actually another legal piece of paper, which is a uh, another offshore international bank. Uh, that's the nature of trusts. And technically they're registered in Turtle Island. Um, that's in uh, Arizona. Uh, all trusts, North American trusts, at least go through Turtle Island. Um, the $42 membership gives even a healthy person a uh, all the status of an MMAR license member okay period uh, you don't have to be dead uh, nearly dead you don't have to be suffering a chronic illness um, basically uh, that's anyone we simply cannot deny access to the 420 club our 420 uh, uh, federal agent status to anyone who just be, we cannot deny it if they're healthy that, that's just that's just the way it is uh, and it gives you all the rights of an MMAR victim who was very sick uh, that's just the way it is okay because you're being given private individual rights as your own federal agent and uh, that covers you under common law and uh, Section 8.3 of the Criminal Code is all common law defenses and excuses. And there's at least a half a dozen of them there that apply to marijuana. Just go look at Section 8.3. It's a, it's a golden book, and uh, technically lawyers are not enforcing Section 8.3. Uh, and that's, they're stuck in a trap. I feel sorry for lawyers. You know, the, there's no such thing as a, a good, honest lawyer anymore. Uh, period. They're, they're, they're stuck in a bad contract that they wrote to themselves in 1993. And that's their problem. Okay. I personally can't recommend anyone to use a lawyer. Okay. You're only going to get rotten advice. Okay. Uh, that's my opinion. Uh, I'm entitled to it. Uh, technically, I use what's called a trustee. Okay. Now, Mine is a very high-ranking trustee, okay? very, very high-ranking trustee. And every city has some trustees uh, because if they're not writing trust law, trust law uh, they're acting like accountants. Okay, uh, Bankruptcy accountants are very common that a bankruptcy accountant is a trustee. Okay, And they're all over the place. And basically, uh, the next part is about growers. Okay, There's really no need... For uh, someone in the 420 club, you know, our 420 uh, agent, private agency society to have a trustee. Okay, it really isn't necessary. Okay, you're declaring your rights and uh, we're walking into a courtroom where they technically have to grace them. Okay. Now, if you're a grower, uh, you need to find a trustee. Okay. It's really basic. It, it's not that the forms are impossible to do. They're actually very easy to do. It's just that when you have an accountant, like a bankruptcy accountant, signing off on it, uh, it's it's weighted. It's it's weight and gold. 
Okay? Basically, you're doing the exact opposite of a bankruptcy. Okay? It, it's a general amnesty offer. A peer trust is a general amnesty offer to totally legalize the cannabis industry. And it's done through these forms that most bankruptcy lawyers will be aware of. Okay? And if they have a problem, they can call our trustees to be up to par. But technically, you shouldn't have in any major city in Canada any problem in finding a trustee who is not doing trust at that time. He's doing accounting for businesses and bankruptcies and settling estates. Any estate lawyer probably is a trustee. There's an, you know, but again, uh, I, I don't like using the term lawyer. Uh, trustees are not lawyers, okay? At least the trustee that you want, okay, is not a lawyer, okay? They can affiliate themselves with lawyers, but technically, uh, trustees have a different mandate than lawyers do, okay? Now, this trustee, uh, what he does is he'll do all your equipment in one column. He'll do all of your... Uh, uh, dried goods in another column, and technically, on a 50 light operation, that wouldn't be that much money, okay? But under a peer trust, you're allowed to crop off on a 50 light operation that last crop, okay? Uh, when you, okay, the $42 gets you into a peer trust, okay? The $420 for the, Can the Cannabis Cultural Guild gets you into a pure trust. Okay, and they're different. Okay, pure trusts are blind trusts. It's, uh, again, that trust accountant uh, or that accountant that you find who uh, will be able to explain this in better detail, in a lot more detail if you need it. Okay, uh, basically, uh, it's hard to find information on it because trust laws simply are not published. Uh, that's just the way it is. Um, now, what he'll do, uh, the last crop off in a case of 50 lights is uh, 50 pounds. And uh, you have to buy off your, uh, your, your assets. Okay, It's the exact opposite of bankruptcy. You fill out all your assets and all your goods and you, I would max out my lights that you have and then a 50 light operation that would be 50 lights and it's safe to assume you get 50 pounds now you have to cash out all your assets at retail value now the lights are at you know all your fixed goods that are become tangible goods in a co-op across you know on the other side of the line when you pay your 420 dollars that 400 dollars is not a cash grab it's a $420 deposit on the payout that you're going to do on your equipment, on your dry goods, and on your inventory that's under lights over there. Okay? And the expensive part is those 50 lights in the case of a 50 light operation. Because that's $100,000. Okay? And you're going to have to pay the taxes on that $100,000. Well, it's not... Okay. It's... Again... I'm not using the right nomenclature, but a bank, you know, it's the exact opposite of bankruptcy. You add up all your three columns, you uh, literally hand it to the trust fund, okay? It never moved, it never changed, it, nothing ever actually moved, but with a piece of paper, all this inventory and all these tangible goods get put into the trust fund, and you buy it back for 10%, 10 cents on the dollar. And now, you can donate all of this equipment to your co-op, your grower co-op that you set up on the other side of this $420 line. The day you give the $420 line is the last day you can transfer a clone onto your big lights, you know, like into your growing lights. And as long as the, you're not showing any other clone activity being transferred onto your tables, it's perfectly legal to crop off that last crop. Now, you simply need a customer to sell it to now. Okay, that's legal. And that's all there is to it. 
Now, what we're setting up under uh, the pure trust, okay, the pure trust is what's going to be doing business with everyone after we walk out with a court date in a week, week and a half. That pure trust is literally uh, your get out of jail free card, okay? All liability of when you enter the pure trust, in other words, when you give that $420 deposit, you are walking free and clear of all liability ever created by you being a pot manufacturer, you know, a pot grower. Uh, doesn't matter how many income taxes you haven't paid. Uh, you, you, you don't. You don't have to pay them. Okay? It's literally. Okay? It's like a bankruptcy, but the other way around. Okay? You walk away from all kinds of legal liabilities. You're not walking away from your Sears credit card, though. Okay? It's not that kind of bankruptcy. You're not walking away from your, uh, yeah, what else can I say? It's not that, it's, it's, in those ways it differs from a bankruptcy. But you end up scot-free on the other side. And they literally cannot go after you once you cross the line. Okay? They can jump on you tooth and nail if you don't follow the rules. In other words, you start selling your inventory, which is now bonded inventory. That entire, in a case of 50 lights, is bonded inventory. Okay? You're literally, okay, let's say for a light, you know, for a grow up of 50 lights, it'll probably be about $150,000 buyout. Okay? But you're giving that much equipment. When you buy it back for $15,000, you're actually getting $150,000 tax deductible uh, off your profits in in the co your personal okay as the officers of the agency it, it's it, it's far better than a bankruptcy technically you're you're getting uh, probably a couple of years worth of income tax personal income tax covered by you having washed everything clean and people can say that's unfair but that, that's just the law Okay, it, it's a one-time opportunity for the industry to come clean. Now, under the 420 private members, well, let's go back to the members, okay? We're saying that that member has all the rights of a private individual being a private agent for himself, and that means he can use pot responsibly. Uh, we're basically, you know, under a pure trust and under a pure trust, uh, the city is totally free and clear of liability of implementing uh, these uh, compassion clubs that you want. Uh, technically, the city has no such protection of an MMPR provider, okay? Because they're not covered by a peer trust or a pure trust. They're simply not, okay? I have no problem signing over an MMPR uh, grower onto our program, none whatsoever, okay? And uh, because uh, I can't imagine an MMPR grower, once he looks deeply into what he's signing into, uh, uh, is, uh, is getting screwed. Okay. And again, I wouldn't go to a lawyer for that advice. I'd go to a trust accountant because lawyers are out to screw you. Okay. I, I don't have a nice thing to say about lawyers. Since 1993, they've been caught in a trap. And I feel sorry for them, but they've ruined their institution. And they really have to wake up to the fact that nobody trusts lawyers, okay? Uh, at least I don't. <laughs> so, basically, what we're saying is, in, in our fact, is that a, a pure trust and that we're setting up has to operate under a medical platform. Okay, and the clubs that we're promoting are using these nurses that the pharmaceutical industry rejected. Okay, these nurses are very qualified. They're like farmer, like uh, rural nurses in the countryside. They can actually prescribe prescriptions. They are actually well qualified, and we have no problem using them. And but there's not enough of them for the program that we're rolling out, which is a nationwide program of general amnesty for all growers. And these growers now need to find a co-op to open with. We'll find it very easy to open a co-op, uh, a, a retail outlet for his merchandise 
and other growers uh, because uh, the city is free and clear of liability of you uh, uh, for your venture. Okay, co-op ventures are there so that the city has uh, are free and clear of liability. Now, the reason we're using nurses is one: under a peer trust, we're establishing a medical platform. Now, there's a very powerful position on that board, which is a uh, a uh, resolver. Okay, and the resolver is the the last word. Okay. The, there, in the trust, there's going to be one trustee with the position of resolver. But under those resolvers, under that resolver, there will be resolver agents who are these nurses. Okay? And these nurses are can't be charged. Anyone operating under these nurses' care can't be charged. Okay? Any member going in, uh, the last word and be-all end word of your ability to get pot is up to that nurse. End of story. Okay, and that way we're under a medical platform. Now the reality is, is um, these clubs uh, uh, read my literature on uh, September thirtieth posting, and it outlines that what these nurses are going to do. Okay, uh, we're saying that the only real oh, there's two big differences. They're going to happen to existing compassion clubs. Is one, uh, you're going to get a nurse in uh, your reception area, okay? And it's not your paycheck. It's the we're paying for it. The B C M M A R is paying the wages of that lady, okay? Period. It's not your staff. She, she's not on your staff. She's on our staff, okay? One hundred percent our liability and one hundred percent our protection. On that nurse okay because that's just the way it is it has to operate under a medical platform now 95% of all the members going into that club are going to be uh, no problem they're actually quite healthy they're using their medicine their, their, their marijuana for medical purposes of relieving stress relieving uh, anxiety relieving uh, mood mood swings, we're relieving pain from a football injury or from a basketball injury or whatever. Okay, people, all kinds of regular people use pot responsibly every day, and technically, the nurse is there for that five percent of patients. And go ask any club on any given day uh, if they had a hundred members walk in, there would be three or four who came in distraught. And need attention okay and the nurses are there for those people okay and literally they can come up to a guy who looks beshoveled and uh, set him up for a shelter because they're that kind of nurses uh, they can hand them meal tickets they can do all kinds of things that a first-line provider uh, does and, and I have yet to talk to a club who thinks that the nurse isn't a good idea Okay, yeah, it, it, it's a brilliant idea. It's a beautiful front. And it actually is more than a front. It, it's the solution to operating a medical platform for healthy people. Technically, the liquor, uh, the bar is a hospital. The nurse, the, 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 your, the, your bartender is a nurse under the liquor control board. And basically, what we're establishing is a, a platform where your when you walk into this compassion club, which won't look much different than the way it is now, you're going to see a lady who's or a man. You know, I'm not trying to be men. Men can be these nurses as well, you know. But you're going to walk up to someone who's qualified, and it'll be hi Fred, hi Jane, carry on, okay, for 95 percent of the people. But when, he, when someone distraught comes in, they're going to get attention. And that's really good. Now, with this platform and the fact that the city can't be charged by taking on anyone with a pure trust. okay, And that's a real big advantage over the MMPR program is we're doing it under a peer trust, under a pure trust. And I have no idea why any city would accept the liability of the MMPR operating in their city when 
uh, they had the full option of joining an MMR, BC MMAR, uh, which is half the cost, a, a quarter of the cost that an MMAR PR person is take corporation is taking on. Uh, you can be an MM BC MMAR grower provider for uh, one quarter of the cost. And start. There's no comparison. Uh, you know, uh, we're, the, the MMPR people are backed by millions and millions and millions of dollars. But you know what? They're the smartest guys out there. You know, like those guys actually have trustees who can tell them that what we're doing is right. Okay. And the reality is, is every one of these MMPR providers are going to find out that Health Canada has just at all, you know, added 50% more rules onto what package you saw, you know, a month ago, uh, they've added on 50 more rules, okay? And because they keep adding on rules means uh, you can walk away from any existing contract or agreement to agree to become an MMPR grower uh, because uh, they keep padding on more and more rules, which make it more and more expensive for you to be an MMPR grower. And frankly, when you uh, to explain all the... Uh, bad things about the MMPR program, uh, I would be charged with slander. Okay, I'm sorry, there's nothing. There really are no advantages uh, on going to the MMPR program versus our BC MMAR program. And the biggest advantage there is the pure trust. Because once you enter ours, if you, you, you can't be busted. You just can't be busted by playing by the rules. And uh, we really hold the keys to the city uh, accepting clubs who uh, accept our members because the city is free and clear of liability because we're operating under a pure trust. And uh, what can I say? It's a brave new world. People should uh, take advantage of this. At least look into it, okay? And if you don't trust me, go talk to a trust lawyer. And they'll explain, you know, show them my video and my paperwork. And he'll go, hey, that's a really bright idea. Okay. And, uh, what we're, we're walking into a court date real soon where a judge will have to say yes or a judge will have to say no to accepting a peer and a pure trust. And it's a brave new world after that. Okay. Technically, they can't say no, but we're dealing with the harpster, the biggest criminal that's, you know, constitutional criminal Canada has ever seen. Okay. And, what can I say? On that, uh, uh, we're proceeding. Uh, look at my website. Go to my script pages. Uh, go to my Facebook page. I don't have a website anymore. Homeland Security killed that two years ago. And that's all there is to it. Okay? Uh, so uh, have a nice day. And uh, get informed. This really is big. This really is important. And it can mean the total institutionalization and legalization of the pot industry. And on that, thank you very much.